Hello and welcome to Frontline TV. We're here today at the Pinoka Integrated Traffic Service Unit. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. And just tell our fine viewers who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Jerry Court. And you are? A corporal with the, uh, with the Traffic Integrated Unit. And Jerry's partner is? Acting Sergeant Nathan Kardish, and I'm with the Sheriff's Department here in Pinoka. So let me start with you then, Nathan. What is it that uh, you and your partner Jerry do, actually? Uh, well, both of us do the admin side of the house, so we take care of our members and make sure that their paperwork is done correctly, and we do the supervisory side, but we also do on the road, so we're doing traffic enforcement and traffic education. And Jerry, how often do you get to leave the office and drive your car out on the highways with your lights flashing and stuff? Well, not as much as I used to since I got promoted to corporal. There's oh. a lot of paperwork in this job, and... Uh, you know, it keeps sometimes it keeps me in the office the whole day. There's lots, there's lots to review, and there's administrative and operationally. Now, it seems to be one of the um, reasons for the integrated traffic units was to keep the highways safer. And can you just talk a little bit about how that's done? Well, by being integrated now, we've increased manpower, so there's more of us on the road. There's more of a presence, and just that presence alone seems to be slowing people down and making drivers safer. Um, we're also sharing intelligence and sharing ideas and when we were separate units we weren't doing that as much we were trying but we weren't doing it on a regular basis now that we're in the same unit we're able to share that information and come up with new ideas and it's working very well and Jerry tell me how did you get to pick Nathan as your partner well, I had no choice in the matter actually <laughs> oh seriously well no I Nathan had been uh, out of the Red Deer office and he was part of the pilot project uh, the integrated uh, pilot project with Tasquin and I uh, was speaking to the uh, acting deputy chief one time, and I asked him if Nathan could, you know, could come to Pinoka, because we worked with him a lot in the past. Even though we weren't integrated, Nathan been down here a lot, helping us on uh, seatbelt operations, speed operations. So we knew each other quite well, and we figured there'd be no problem getting along and working together. And that has certainly panned out. Now, were you guys very busy this past weekend? It was a long weekend, and I hear we had something like 4,000 across the province uh, of traffic infractions and things. How was it like in your neck of the woods? Uh, it was busy. Uh, our calls for service were down, but uh, I believe that was because uh, we had a good presence on the highway, and by being out there, I think we put our calls for service down because people saw us out there and didn't feel the need to have to call us to come out. Well, it seems like this is really working well. What's, what's the future, do you think, for, uh, for integrated traffic units? Uh, it will progress, and I certainly hope so, because I've been in this outfit for close to 27 years, and traffic services was always fragmented before. Multiple units stationed all over the place, uh, multiple reporting structures. Uh, structures. Now we're, we're one under one reporting structure, and we're integrated, working together, and our invisibility has been enhanced on the highway, and, you know, it's really working well, and this is... You know, and studies have shown that, you know, a instead of having two Mounties here and two Mounties there, it's better to have a large central group and then fan out to different points and do your work. Now, I've got to ask you then, now, Nathan, you have this, this is your bike, right? Is this? Yeah, it's a Sheriff motorcycle, yes. So what kind of bike is it? I'm sure everyone wants to know. <laughs> it's a Harley Davidson Electric Glide, police edition. So. And what's it equipped with? It has everything that a car would have, uh, minus the computer. So it does have a radar, it has uh, radio, lights, siren, and everything else. The only thing it is missing is the computer system. And uh, is it fun to drive, huh? <laughs> fun to ride, not to drive. Oh, I'm so yes. sorry. It's fun, to, it's fun to ride. Absolutely, yes. It's a nice perk of the job, for sure. I bet it is. So, Nathan, I will, or Jerry, I will ask you then, you, in this car that you have, that you drive around in, can you, um, I'm going to ask you to take a minute and show, show our viewers some of the things that are in the car that help you uh, keep tra you know, the road safe. Okay, this is our probably standard issue for uh, police vehicles. It's a Ford Crown Victoria. This is referred to as a clean roof vehicle because there is no light bar on it. However, we have lights in the front, back, uh, lights here attached to the side view mirrors, all to provide uh, ample visibility. Uh, these have been used extensively and is pre pretty well our main choice of police car for traffic and for general duty for the last, uh, ever since Chev start, stopped making theirs since in the 90s. And it's pr proven to be, uh, you know, a proven workhorse. Now inside the vehicle, well, we have our standard operating equipment. We have a, our radar unit here. And this tells us here target speed, target of the vehicle. And this is patrol speed. This is how fast we're going. And all, of course, all the accompanying buttons to do the internal test. This is the radar 
this is the antenna here that sends out the radar beam and then it bounces off a vehicle, comes back, and the readings are displayed here. And this is the remote handheld, so we can op we operate it from here. Now this side here, this is our mobile workstation. When this is fired up, this is our computer. And we can access our files. What happens is, if uh, we get a complaint on the highway, Highway 2 of an erratic driver or a collision, telecoms dispatches the complaint, it shows up here on our screen, tells us all the information that they've gotten and shows us where to go. And then from the screen we can work on the file. We can add people to the file, uh, write up your reports on the file, and you know it just speeds up the work sometimes. Now another piece of equipment we have here is this the Pro Laser 3. This is laser as opposed to radar. And then you can see how we use this. We aim it through here, and when uh, we get a reading here in the distance, uh, the violator is away. And so this is quite, uh, this focuses on a single vehicle at a time. And when you, when you aim it at the vehicle and you receive a reading, it's definitely that vehicle doing that speed. And for the other equipment, here is our, this is our police radio here. And this is uh, A6. This is our local channel here in Panoka. And if you go to other areas up to Wetaskiwin or down to Red Deer, you simply uh, change the channel and you go to, uh, you know, here for example, this is Wetaskiwin channel. This is the channel for down in Red Deer where you may, if you want to work or talk to uh, traffic members from Innisfail. And up here, this controls all our lights and our siren. Uh, for example, here, arrow flash for a directional arrow at the back, uh, lights to the front alternating. Uh, we can also put this on to kill our headlights. So we're sitting, we can uh, increase the strobe or decrease, decrease the strobe. Up here is our sirens. There's a variety here. And so, you know, it all works well. This is our camera, our VIX, our VIX camera system here. What happens is an officer will power it up when he starts a shift, so it's on standby. And the minute when it's powered up and we activate the lights, it starts recording. Oh, okay. And that way we'll have our violator, or if we stop an impaired driver, everything is on video. And of course, and so that is also also that's a great tool for in our investigation and for court purposes. You can actually, by having the accused on camera, you can demonstrate to the court that ESC was actually impaired just by looking at him, uh, how he talks, how he behaves, etc. And sometimes when you tell them they're on camera, they start to behave better. Okay, Nathan, one other quick question I want to ask you. What's all that stuff on your belt? All the stuff on my belt. It, it just looks really impressive, but I don't <laughs> know what it all is. Okay, well, if we start from the front and work way around, yeah. here will be your two mag pouches. So it's all my extra bullets that go for my sidearm. Okay. Here would be my pepper spray. Then I have a knife here that I can use to cut seat belts if I need to get someone out of a car quickly. Right. Uh, then of course my side arm. I have a baton. And then on this side I'll have my handcuffs, my police radio, and a flashlight. So you're well equipped? Very well okay. equipped, yes. Alright, do you want to give us a demonstration of, of like how this, um, how you, you know, like riding off into the sunset? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I'm sure everyone would like to see that bike go. Sure.